Hey, I'm the chef. And welcome to our kitchen. And today I'm going to bring you a recipe that is very, very old. Just and older I, than me? <laughs> very much older than you. The way I look or the way I feel? How I look or how I feel. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm 90. This is a recipe that has been in my family for I don't even know how long. Um, my grandma used to make it. From my understanding, my great grandma used to make it. My mom used to make it, and I have the recipe here that was from my grandma, and it's like, yeah, I've had to write it down because it's just so old that it's not hardly um, readable anymore. So I've made sure to copy it down. That's at least from the 50s or 60s. Yeah, it's, it's very old. This is a very old recipe. So it's also very easy. Um... If you don't like raisins, though, you're not going to want to make it. But for anybody that loves raisins, then stick around for this one. We don't have to get out a mixer or nothing like that. We're going to do everything in our sauce pot until it's time to add our flour. And we're even going to put our flour in our sauce pot off of the stove. We're just going to mix it all up and then we're going to dump it into our baking dish. You're going to need a 13 by 9 baking dish. You can butter it and flour it, spray it, whatever you want. I'm just going to give it a spray down with some canola oil. So let's get to, let me read you these ingredients. First thing you're going to need is a cup of granulated sugar. Two sticks of butter. You can use regular butter or you can use margarine. I'm going to use a cup of raisins. I always use more raisins than just a cup. That's because of me. Chef loves raisins. So I usually use about a cup and a half of raisins. I've even went up to two cups of raisins before. Um, you're going to need a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, half teaspoon of allspice, and half teaspoon of cinnamon, a pinch of salt, and two cups of water. I want more raisin in it. Raisin in it. That's what we're going to start out with. We're going to cook that on the stove, and we're going to bring it to a boil, and we're going to let it boil for about five minutes. Once it's boiled for five minutes, we're going to turn the burner off. Push it off the burner and just let it sit and get cold. So this is a two-step process. So if you have stuff to do during the day, you want to make this, you can make the first part. Shut off your burner, push it off, go about your business, do the things you got to do. Come back later on in the evening and finish it, which is very simple. So what do you say? Let's get to making this raisin cake. Got my trusty saucepan here too. And I thought since I'm making this recipe that's really, really old... The chef always makes fun of me because I keep this knife. Mm -hmm. The tip of it is even, it's even, um, the very, very tip is gone. But this was a knife that my grandma and my mom used to use all the time. So yeah, when I just have a simple chore, and it makes the best potato peeler. Not very sharp. When I, he says it's not very sharp, but. I could prove him wrong. <laughs> you go to jail for that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's when you need that new thing made by Safety Can Express. Safety uh, Can Express. <laughs> you guys would not believe what the chef has thought up for a commercial. <laughs> they could only do it on Saturday Night Live. I don't even know I, where he gets these ideas. I just don't know. But... It would be really funny. I just don't know if it's something that would get us kicked off of YouTube or not. It so, might be. Probably. It's a Saturday Night Live kind of thing. Anyway, this is my knife that I use to cut up my butter. He always makes fun of me, but I will keep this knife until I absolutely can't keep it anymore. And hopefully it outlives me and I can pass it down to my niece. So, anyway, let's get started making this so I'll quit talking. All right. First thing we're going to need for this is a cup of sugar. So I got my pan here. You want to use your large saucepan. Because like I said, when we get all this stuff mixed in, later on we're going to mix our flour and everything right into our pan. So there goes our cup of sugar. Oh, and my mystery thing's still coming up, guys. I haven't forgot about it. I just got to find a few more items. No, we haven't forgot about that, and we haven't forgot about going on camera either. It's just things have just been a little off lately. Um, you know, life outside of YouTube, things going on. Okay, now comes the raisin in it. Raisin in it. Got to get that in there for the chef, him his raisin in it. 
I'm uploading a video while I'm doing this, so I'm hoping that this is going to record okay. We shall see. All right. Like, so we still have all those raisins that my sister-in-law gave us that we're trying to get rid of. Which is not a problem around the chef, but with us getting ready to start that diet again. Yeah, I don't one cup of raisins. Anybody that's on a keto diet has never read the Atkins book knows. You can't have some, raisins. Where's the raisin though to stop your system flat until you have a ketosis? So no raisin cake. After right? This, yeah, after this, yeah. All right. No carrot cake, I mean. All right, there's about a half a cup of raisin. So we got the chef a good half and a cup, a cup and a half. If you want to follow the exact recipe, then it's a cup. This cake is just very different because a lot of things that you make has, it's got raisins in it, but they're hard raisins. What we're doing, we're going to plump those raisins up and we're going to bring the juice out of those raisins. And that's what's going to help flavor that cake. This is a cake that doesn't have any icing on it. I'll let you know ahead of time. But it's so moist and flavorful that you don't need icing for it. Just get you a hot cup of tea, a hot cup of coffee, or a little glass of milk, and you're good to go. Okay, we've got our raisins in. Now we're going to do a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And wouldn't you know, I forgot my teaspoon measuring, but that's okay. I don't need it. Done this plenty of times. Half a teaspoon of nutmeg. We're going to do a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. You know what? I'm just going to shake that in there because we always do a little extra. Just a little. We do about a teaspoon of cinnamon, actually. And allspice. We're going to do a half a teaspoon of allspice. I'm going to give this just a shake down in here. All right, that's about a half a teaspoon allspice. Excuse you. <laughs> Just for good measure, I'm giving another dash of nutmeg. All right, we've got all that in there now. We're just gonna do a pinch of salt. So just a, that ought to do it for our salt. And we're gonna add Two sticks of butter. I've already cut my butter up. And like I said, you can use margarine if you want to. It doesn't have to be real butter. Yes, Chef? Yeah, I think Pooh's hungry. He just brought me his porcupine and wanted to know if you had any more porcupine balls. <laughs> <laughs> porcupine balls are all gone. <laughs> well, That's life with the Chef. I should write a book, seriously. Life with the chef, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Yeah, he is my partner in crime for life. So, we were watching Roseanne one, one time, and there was a show on there, and I guess Dan was worried about Roseanne filing for divorce, and she said, I would never file for divorce. I would never leave you. You're stuck with me. Just consider it a life sentence. <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, that's how we see it. A life sentence without any possibility of parole. So, and we plan to keep it that way. And to that, I've got two cups of water. I'm going to add that in here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to give this a stir. Got my little trusty whisk here. Just going to mix all this up in here. Get all the spices mixed up. Just a little, and I'm going to get it over to the stove. I'm going to put this on medium-high, more closer to high. We're going to bring it to a boil. Once it starts boiling, I'm going to turn it down to about medium. We're going to boil it for five minutes, so let's go to the stove. Okay, we got it on the stove now. I've got my burner on about high. I'm just going to mix it around again. Make sure to get all of our cinnamon and nutmeg and allspice mixed up. And we're just going to sit here, and you don't have to keep stirring it right now, just occasionally. We're just going to watch until it starts to bubble. We're going to stir it all up, make sure our butter is all melted. Once it starts to bubble, we're going to turn it down to about medium, medium low. We're going to let it boil for five minutes. 
It'll be back when it starts to boil. All right, if you can see this, just about all of our butter's melted now. We've got that creamy color. And we're just starting to come to a boil. Got a slight boil going on right now. Just a little foamy. As soon as it comes to a more of a rolling boil, I'm just a little under a rolling boil, we're gonna go ahead and turn the burner down. So when we get that far, we'll be back. Okay, if you can see the bubbles now, we're bubbling. I've got my burner turned down to just a little more than low. And we're gonna time this for about five minutes. Once our five minutes is up, we're gonna shut our burner off. We're gonna take it off of the burner. We're gonna put a lid on it and we're gonna let it sit there as long as it takes until it gets cold. So we'll be back. Oh, and I wanted to also mention that you'll just wanna give this a stir occasionally during your five minute waiting period. All right, our five minutes is up now. And we have that wonderful raisin smell going on in here because we've got all that juice coming out of those raisins, making that smell so good. I'm going to shut my burner off. I'm going to put a lid on my pan and I'm just going to move it off of the burner. And we're going to let it sit there until it doesn't have to get cold, but we want it to cool down. We want it to at least get to room temperature. If you try to mix the flour and everything in while it's hot, then it's not gonna rise much. And this is a cake that doesn't rise a whole lot anyway. It rises just enough to make it delicious. So um, we're just gonna let that sit there. I'm gonna put my Noxzema on my face and do my stuff that I normally do in the evening time. And I'll come back and check this in about an hour and see how it is. And if it's ready, then we'll get to adding our other ingredients. Okay, everybody, we are back to finish out this My Granny's Old Fashioned Raisin Cake. So this has had plenty of time to cool down now. I'm gonna take the lid off. And I just wanted to show you guys, this will form a film over the top, but that's okay, that's what we want. That's part of the flavor, so don't be alarmed by that. As you can see here, I've got my trusty old 13 by 9 inch glass baking dish. Just because we're doing it a little retro style today, just bringing out my old baking dish. Got my raisin mixture right here. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. The timer just went off. So I'm just going to give this a stir and I'm going to scrape all the raisin juice and sweetness from the sides of the pan give my raisins a little bit of a stir now to this what i want to do is i want to add two cups of flour you can sift this if you want to but it's not necessary we just want to get two cups two cups of flour in there there goes one cup And two cups, We've got our two cups of flour. Now to this, we want to add, we're gonna do one teaspoon of baking powder. And I like to use the Clabber Girl brand. You can use whatever brand you wanna use. It's one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda all right and that's all there is to this now we're just going to take our whisk and we're going to blend this all up in here get it all nice and mixed up now if you find after you've added your two cups of flour that it still seems a little loose and you need to add a little extra it's okay you can add a little extra flour Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I think it just depends on how much juice those raisins plump out when we cook them. So I'm trying not to keep my arms in your way, but I am right-handed, so I stir better with my right hand. So we're just going to mix this all up. Try to get all those lumps out of there. 
you can use a hand mixer if you want to, but why bring out something else just to get it dirty, right? Okay, now if you can see this, it is, to me, it's just a tad bit loose. That means we've got a lot of raisin juice going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to grab about a half a cup of flour. And that ought to do it. Just a half a cup and get that all mixed up in there. We don't need to add any extra baking powder or baking soda. We've got plenty in there. We don't want the cake mix to be too thick, but we don't want it to be super runny. So that was two and a half cups total of all-purpose flour. Give this a good mix. Smells so good. The raisins have came out, making that, making that batter a nice light brown color. Oh, smells so wonderful. And you know, if you don't like raisins or you don't think you like raisins, give this cake a try before you totally make a judgment call on that. Because I think you might change your mind. Raisins are good for you too. They're packed with iron, vitamins. Okay, all we're going to do now is we're going to pour this into our sprayed 9 by 13 pan. Make sure we get all of that out of there. I didn't bring my scraper over, and I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to ask the chef, because the chef is taking a nap right now. He's been a busy bee all day today. He's been out working outside a little bit, getting the vehicles all um, prepared for this next winter blast we're supposed to have come through. So, all right, we've got all that. Knocked over my spray. And we're just going to spread it around to its level. And like I said, this won't rise a lot, but it will, it will rise. You'll see when we're done. It makes the best raisin cake, y'all. Cake, breakfast bars, whatever you, well, they're thicker than a bar. So, all right, we're going to put this in the oven. And we're going to let this bake. <sighs> I can't really remember. Uh, bear with me a minute. I think we're going to let it bake for about 30 to 35 minutes. So I will let you know exactly how long it took me to bake this. So let's get it in the oven. We'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, there you have it, guys. Grandma's old-fashioned raisin cake. Actually, it's probably great-grandma's old-fashioned raisin cake. Can you see those dimples in there? All over from all those raisins. I know there's a little bit of a glare. Sorry about that. This is one of those cakes you don't have to worry about the raisins all sinking to the bottom and tasting burnt. We have raisins throughout. And like I said, it does raise, if you can see that. But it smells so good. You get a faint hint of that cinnamon, a little bit of the nutmeg, but the predominance is the raisins and the butter. Uh, it's just got the perfect amount of sweetness. And like I said before, if you don't think you like raisins in cakes or anything like that, give this one a try before you totally count them out. And hopefully this one will change your mind. I did want to let you know that it took 21 minutes for this cake to get done. So I did the toothpick test. I just stuck a toothpick in the center and pulled it out. And when it comes out clean, it's all done. So as you can see here though, I it's one of those things that was a guessing game and I couldn't remember what my grandma and my mom always said, but on this card, there is no, somebody wrote up in the corner 350, but there is no time that you're supposed to bake this. So I was guessing 30 to 35 minutes. Like I said, I couldn't remember. I've made this, I make this a couple of times a year, but it was 21 minutes that it took me at 350 degrees. So as soon as this gets cooled down, I'm gonna cut it up. But I also wanted to add, if you would prefer to dust it with powdered sugar or even make a vanilla glaze for it, you can, whatever. But to me, this is one of those cakes that just doesn't need 
it doesn't need a glaze or it doesn't need a, a frosting on it but you're welcome to do whatever you'd like to if you want to make a glaze take a cup of powdered sugar and a tablespoon or so of heavy cream or milk and whisk it up with a dash of vanilla and just glaze it all over the top but we like it just the way it is so like I said as soon as it gets cooled I'm going to cut up a piece and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside okay guys there you have it there is a piece of this nice dimply raisin cake that's raisin in it, in it. loaded with raisins all throughout let me show you this side raisins in this side just a layer of raisins need more raisins if you can see that in there nice plump raisins it's so moist and buttery nice and soft and moist this cake is delicious guys you so enjoy the picture because by tomorrow i'll have devoured all of it i i called my oldest brother earlier and i asked him if they made this cake when he was a little kid and he said yes. So to our guesstimate, which as you can see, we've talked about this recipe before. Um, this recipe has got to be 75 years plus old. So it's a very old recipe, a very easy recipe, as you can see. Probably older than that. Probably over 100 years. Probably over 100 years old, yeah, probably. But we know it's at least over 75 years old. So, you know, give it a try. Please give it a try. Really good. I think you guys might be surprised. And like I said, it's not one of these cakes that need an icing. It's great to have with coffee or tea or a glass of milk. It's very buttery. It's got a great raisin flavor. So, I hope you guys have a chance to try it out. You can see those layers of butter down in there. If you guys have a chance to give it a try, if you do, please let us know in the comment section. And thank you to our new subscribers. Thank you to our loyal subscribers. Thanks, guys. We love and appreciate you all. And um, I guess that's it for tonight. We will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.